Well, it's that time of the year again. It's time to race at Daytona under the lights right before we get into the playoffs. You got Daytona and Darlington. And this, this bubble is getting pretty close. And the regular season battle is also heating up as well. Let's preview Daytona at night. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. Alright, so this is a very important weekend we're heading into as we only have two races left until the Cup Series playoffs. We have Daytona this week and then we have the legendary historic Darlington Raceway next week for the Southern 500. And there's some pretty heated battles going on throughout the point standings right now. That regular season championship battle is getting awfully close. It looked like heading into Daytona that we were going to have a four car battle for the regular season championship. But if you noticed, Denny Hamlin has dropped to sixth in points after his 75 point penalty also penalized 10 playoff points after his l2 engine violation if you want more information about that you can check out my other video i'll put something right here over here is it over here no it's over there it's over there but yeah if you want more information on that check out my video talking about the denny hamlin penalty i'm also going over the austin dillon appeal which is also a big part of this playoff picture as well because they are going for a final appeal Richard Childress racing on Monday and we'll have to see the results of that because there is a chance that they could over overrule it and overturn this call essentially I think they'll up it'll be upheld once again but we'll have to see but back to this regular season battle you have Tyler Reddick Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson battling for the regular season title. Tyler Reddick has been on a hot streak. He is currently the hottest driver in the Cup Series right now. Has been putting on a storm, getting a bunch of second place finishes, getting a bunch of top fives, top three finishes, and then getting the victory at Michigan in pretty great fashion. Was pretty strong all race long along with his teammate Bubba Wallace who actually finds himself on the bubble. But before we move on to Bubba Wallace, let's talk about these other two drivers in the regular season championship battle, that being Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson, Hendrick Motorsports teammates. Kyle Larson has had a very flashy year. I feel like he's out there dominating or competing for the win every week, but he's also made a lot of mistakes this year. We've seen a lot of self-spins, a lot of errors from the number five car throughout the year. But arguably, he's been the best driver throughout the season on a consistent, upfront basis. But a driver that arguably is even more consistent is his teammate, Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott has been completely under the radar, I'd say, all year. It's not like he hasn't been performing, but he's been consistently battling for top fives every week instead of consistently battling for wins like his teammate Kyle Larson. But the big difference is Chase Elliott is keeping his car clean at the end of the race. Chase Elliott has been racing really smart and he's gone over how how much he has struggled since they've moved on to this next-gen car. And I think this season he's finally broke through and has really figured out what he needs to do to get the most speed he can out of the next-gen car. He's having a great year. Like I said, he's been under the radar, but if he keeps on doing what he's doing, he has a great shot at, at winning the regular season title as we're heading into two of the most treacherous racetracks on the circuit being Daytona and Darlington. Daytona, where you can get wrecked by anybody on any lap, or Darlington, a track where you can wreck yourself on any lap. So this should be a great battle. Also to keep in mind, Joe Gibbs Racing hasn't announced if they're going to appeal their penalty or not. I doubt 
they will, and even if they do, they won't get the penalty fully rescinded. But depending on how that goes, Denny Hamlin could potentially have a shot. I doubt it, but you never know. NASCAR has made some wild calls and some wild decisions in the past. So let me know down below who do you think is going to be the regular season champion. All right, now we're on to the bubble battle with the bubble boys. And the bubble boys, you got Ty Gibbs, you got Chris Buescher, you got Ross Chastain, and you got Bubba Wallace. Of course, this one that's sitting the most pretty out of this bunch is the youngest of the four, Ty Gibbs of the number 54, currently 39 points above the cut line. But one thing to keep in mind, like I said earlier, there is a slight chance that Austin Dillon's penalty could get rescinded. And if this were the case, this would move the bubble up. And then if we have a win at Daytona, that moves the bubble up. And at that point, if Austin Dillon gets the penalty rescinded and we get a brand new winner at Daytona, all of a sudden, Ty Gibbs is the, is the driver on the bubble with all the pressure heading into Darlington. Just something to keep in mind. So like I said, Ty Gibbs, 39 points above the cut line. Then only 16 points above the cut line is Chris Buescher. And you have to feel for Chris Buescher. He's been so close to winning a couple of races this season. Was not able to get the job done. Has had some bad luck. Has had some incidents throughout the year as well. And it's put him in a very, very tough position when it comes to the end of this regular season and making the playoffs. And then we have two drivers separated by one point heading into Daytona for the last playoff spot, and that is Ross Chastain and Bubba Wallace. Now, both of these drivers are going to be fighting really hard for this last spot, going really hard for playoff points when it comes to the end of these stages, trying to get maxed out on stage points. I meant to say stage points, not playoff points. To try to max out as many stage points as they can when it comes to Daytona especially. So I would really be looking at Bubba Wallace and Ross Chastain and maybe Chris Buescher as well to try to be at the front for Daytona to try to get as, mu as many stage points as they can. All right, now that we have kind of gone over the regular season championship battle and the bubble battle, let's actually talk about Daytona. Honestly, there's not a whole bunch to talk about, to be completely honest with you. We've seen how a lot of these restrictor plate, restrictor plates, I still call them restrictor plates, super speedway races go. We've seen how they go over the last couple of races. We have pretty much two thirds of the event, if not more, maybe even 75%, three fourths of the event. We just see everybody riding around at half throttle, either in a single file line or even two wide, three wide, where it kind of looks like they're racing, but they're really just all riding in line. It's pretty much organized chaos, I guess you could say. So that's something to be watching out for all day is teams trying to save as much fuel as possible to work out these stages. I really still think they should take away stage breaks at all tracks, I think I'm one of the few guys on that hill, but I think I'm one of the many people on the hill of they should take away stage breaks at super speedways because that, I think, would maybe take away this. I've heard some drivers, like I think Denny Hamlin said it and some other drivers have said it too, that crew chiefs and teams would just figure out another way to save fuel and figure out the best strategy, which is possibly true but I, I would at least like to try something different because i don't like like super speedway races just aren't the same anymore unfortunately because of the next gen car because of the way they have figured out the stage breaks and a lot of different factors has really ruined super speedway racing for me at least I, I, if you still enjoy it i'm happy for you i'm jealous but it's kind of ruined it for me but that being said, you're gonna like I said, we we're talking about fuel. So uh, let's go into pit stops. We're gonna be seeing a lot of manufacturers working together, coming down pit lane. You're gonna see all the Toyotas work together, all the Fords, all the Chevys. Of course, you're gonna have a couple of outliers during the pit stops because some drivers will be unable 
to come down pit lane with the Chevys or the Fords or for or with whoever they're going to come down with. So we'll have to jump down with somebody else. But also watch out for a lot of chaos coming on to pit lane. We've seen a lot of incidents coming on to pit lane with these huge pit stops with 15 or 20 guys coming in at one time. We've seen a lot of pit road penalties as well. Something to watch out for throughout the event. Like I mentioned with the Bubble Boys, there's going to be a lot of drivers, not just the Bubble Boys, that are going to be fighting hard for stage points because every driver wants to have the best position going into the playoffs. So they want to get as many stage points as they can to max out their regular season points and maybe help themselves from going from ninth to 8th or 5th to 4th or some of these guys to make the playoffs and some of these guys to win the championship of the regular season. So maybe that could possibly help when it comes to saving fuel. A lot of these drivers trying to get as many stage points as possible. But we'll have to see what happens when it comes to that. All right, usually when I go, let's go into the picks. But usually when I do this, I go favorites and underdogs. I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm just, I'm going to give uh, some people to watch out for. I'm not going to necessarily label them as a favorite or as an underdog. But I will give essentially an underdog pick I guess you could say I'm going to have a main pick but I'm also going to have a pick that would win you more money if it hits if you're a betting person so I'm like I said it's it's pretty much the same thing I guess but I'm not necessarily putting labels on favorites and underdogs because it is a super speedway it's a little bit different it takes a little bit different of a skill set so not the same farm of drivers you'd expect competing for the win. That being said, one of the first guys I got to say is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., of course, won the Daytona 500 a couple years ago. A great super speedway racer, has always been one of the best super speedway racers. That's because he's also one of the most aggressive drivers. I've said that on this channel before. To be a great super speedway racer, you have to be an aggressive race car driver. And Stenhouse, he's one of the best on the super speedways. I was about to say Toyota in general, but let me rephrase that. Toyota minus Truex. Nothing against Martin Truex Jr. Big fan of Martin Truex Jr. But he just seems to always be in the wrong place at the wrong time at Daytona and Talladega. And he doesn't tend to get victories. I don't know if, I don't think he's actually ever, no, now I think about it, he's never won on a super speedway. So maybe he's due. Maybe he's due to win at a super speedway then. But he's not, like I said, you got to be aggressive to win at the super speedways. And Martin Truex Jr. is not an aggressive race car driver. But everybody else at Toyota other than maybe, no, actually, no, I would include Legacy as well. I would keep an eye out for all of them. But the ones that I would highlight would be Bubba Wallace, Denny Hamlin, And actually, Eric Jones. I would really keep a close eye on Eric Jones. Eric Jones has won at Daytona before. Great super speedway racer. A driver that needs to win and get in. And he's looking into these next two weeks as two legitimate opportunities of getting into the playoffs with the famous 43. I would also definitely keep a close eye on both of the RCR drivers of Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon. Both of these drivers are fantastic super speedway racers, and they're both desperate for a win to get into the playoffs. And the last drivers that I will mention are are a couple of Ford drivers. I would definitely keep an eye on front row. I would really keep a close eye on RFK, especially Brad Keselowski. I would consider Brad Keselowski to be I'm very mixed. I was about to say he's the best super speedway driver of this century. I was literally about to go that far. The only thing that holds me back from saying that is he is overly aggressive on super speedways. If there's a big wreck happening, best believe Brad is the one that caused it. So that's part of my predictions. Brad will cause an incident, but he will also compete for the win at Daytona. But I would also keep an eye out on Joey Logano. Joey Logano, I'd say, is right below Brad when it comes to skill level and aggression at super speedways. He's someone always to watch out for as well. 
the front row guys of Michael McDowell and Todd Gillen, both of them really want to win, and both of them have seen a lot of success at super speedways. Of course, McDowell getting the Daytona 500 victory, but Todd Gilland, some of his most successful races have been at these all-out super speedway sort of tracks like Atlanta, Daytona, and Talladega. All right, but now let's get to my pick. Who do I think is going to win this race? I got I to gotta go with the heart. Got to go with the heart. And the heart is yelling, Rowdy Bush. Rowdy Bush. Going to get back to victory lane at Daytona. I'm hoping to go back to back. I picked Tyler Reddick last week. So I'm really hoping to go back to back with my boy Rowdy. Continuing that streak of winning races every year of his career. And he needs to get into the playoffs. And the only way he's going to do that is with the win in one of these last two races. But who's kind of more of a underdog that I'm feeling? Who's kind of not one of the favorites by the sports books that I'm feeling? I would go with Eric Jones. I talked a little bit about him earlier. Eric Jones is a great super speedway racer. He is desperate for a win to make it to the playoffs. And he 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 has what it he has what it takes. He has what it takes to win this race. He's well likes in the garage he's part of toyota so i think he will have partners out there i don't think he'll be one of those guys like i think we saw it at talladega earlier in the year where i think it was carson hosevar that got completely left out in the dry i'm a huge fan of carson hosevar but none of the drivers like carson hosevar so they just they let him out there to dry at the end of that race i don't see that happening with someone like eric jones who's very well liked in the garage. But let me know down below, who is your pick to win at Daytona? A very important race when it comes to the regular season championship, the bubble battle. Will we get a brand new winner? I think we will, but let me know what you think. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week, but that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.